What's up, YouTube? So there's been a lot of talk about Convolution recently after Kilohertz released their really awesome Convolver plugin. And I figured it's about time to start talking a little bit about what it is, the science behind it, how it works, and some really interesting ways you can use it to make replicas of racks of effects that you like to use quite a bit, or create interesting new sound mangling things that you've never thought of creating before. So yeah, that's what this video is, a deep dive into convolution. So by definition, convolution is actually not too far off from FM, frequency modulation. The kind of textbook definition of convolution is multiplying a signal by another signal. And that's essentially what you're doing with frequency modulation. The difference is that we're not using basic tones. We're not using sine waves and that kind of thing. We're using the same concept or a similar concept. I think originally the thought behind creating convolution was for reverbs, being able to capture the actual sound of a space, remove the impulse so that you just have the impulse response and then multiply a source sound by the impulse response and the output would be a sound that sounds like it's in the place where that impulse response was recorded. It sounds very complex, but it actually really isn't too complex if you think about like how it's actually done. It's pretty simple. I'm going to be using a free app by none other than Vox and Go, one of my favorite plugin developers. I swear behind the scenes, they're actually running the show. They're pushing the envelope with so many of their plugins, but I feel like they're very much underappreciated. Um, not too many people talk about the crazy things that these guys are doing behind the scenes. So anyway, Vox and Go has an app called Deconvolver. What this does is, okay, so it both generates what's called the test tone or the impulse, uh, as well as deconvolves the resulting signal and gives you just the impulse response. This program is free, so you can go download it from the Vox and Go website. I'm gonna try to remember to post a link in the description. Let's see how we can use this in an interesting context. So first things first, I've already generated a test tone and I've done this a few times to create some interesting things, uh, which we're gonna get into. But what you wanna do is you wanna go to test tone generator, punch all this stuff in and then hit generate. And what it does is it pulls up a menu and asks you where you wanna save your file. You save it to somewhere on your computer. And then we're gonna minimize this for now. And we're gonna pull that sample that we recorded into Cubase. You may just want to turn your monitoring level down because it might be very loud what's happening here because yeah it's like a, a, a zero db uh peak sine wave so just keep that in mind before you hit space as soon as you've imported the thing it's a very loud high-pitched sine wave sweep my first thought was I want to create an impulse response of cloud seed because i know that there's a bunch of my followers who have max and don't have access to cloud seed which is my favorite reverb so that was the first thing i did i created an impulse response of cloud seed a couple of other things and what i want to do here is i want to start by re by creating our own custom reverbs then we're going to step into something a little bit more advanced by creating let's just say a rack of effects in a particular synth uh, and then turn that into an impulse response then we're gonna get really wild by creating glitchy things and creating impulse responses of glitchy things and trying to recreate actual glitches on a different source sound. I think that could be interesting. So first and foremost, let's look at creating a reverb. So I'm not gonna do Cloud Seed for this example because I've already got one of Cloud Seed. What I think could be interesting is maybe turning something like a spring reverb into a convolution because then we have the ability to get like the tone of a spring reverb inside Snap Heap and Multipass and stuff like that, which is something I've wanted to do for a little while. So because convolution reverbs often have like a dry wet thing mixed in, we're gonna want to record the signal at full wet because then we can mix it back in the convolution. Another thing to keep in mind is that often they have the ability to stretch and manipulate these sounds, but I've often found stretching it bigger 
sounds weirder than stretching it smaller by little increments. So try get a longer tail, which you can manipulate later. That's just something that I've picked up um, doing this. So, okay, it's on maximum tail already. Let's uh, set this to full wet by turning this last parameter up all the way. So I've just realized um, I actually grabbed a mono version instead of the stereo version. I was wondering why it kind of sounded a little bit flat there. Um, so, you know, often the more recent convolution stuff does things in stereo. So that's just one thing to double check when you are uh, generating the test tone to make sure that it is in stereo. So we want to render and then we can check how long it is. But like I said, I want to do a couple of reverbs and then we can cycle through them once we've loaded them into the convolution. Okay, so that's a crazy one from Chow Matrix. I like that. We've got a spring, we've got a plate, and we've got a weird Chow Matrix thing. So let's cut the tails and render these out one by one. Now, what we need to do is we need to open up Vox and Go Deconvolver. Here, what we're going to want to do is make sure that we've set the test tone file to the one that we exported earlier. So the cool thing about this is you can do multiple at the same time. As long as they've all come from the same test tone, we can do all three of those ones that we made. Now, all we need to do is hit process. And what it does is it spits it out with uh, the suffix. So at the end of the file, it'll just say DC. So that means deconvolved. Ah, okay, yeah, so that's the thing. The, the, the paid for version, you can do multiple files at a time. The free version, you can do one file at a time. That's fine by me. We're not doing big batches anyway. Uh, let's just do them one by one. That's fine by me. So now we should be able to, what I want to do is actually, I've got a special folder that I'm putting all of my deconvolved IRs into. So let me just find those real quick. So here, let's find a loop or a sound. Uh, That is so cool. That's just like random settings on the Chow Matrix and it's creating this weird glitchy thing with the percussions. So the more normal things, let's look at the spring reverb and the plate reverb that we've created. Amazing. That sounds great. So let's look at some little bit more experimental uses of deconvolution and convolution in general. Okay, now let's get a little bit more experimental. What I want to do here is we've got an instance of Vital. Uh, okay, so I've already pre-baked this. It's like a lead with some effects on it. You can pause the video and copy these effects if you want, um, but this is more conceptual, so you can apply this uh, however you want. So let's disable the oscillator and I've loaded up the sweep, which we recorded out of Convolver. Uh, if you didn't know, Vital can load any samples. So then what I want to do is trigger a MIDI of it and render that out. So what, I, what I've done here is this is basically that sweep loaded as a sample with all those Vital effects applied onto it. So now we're going to render this out and deconvolve it. Let's go browse vital effects and let's just make sure that the same thing is loaded let's have a listen to the vital effects on the drum loop
what we can even do is just to kind of test the theory, let's load this convolver onto Vital and see how close it is to the actual sound of the synth with just that oscillator playing. So let's drop this snap heap onto Vital. Let's open Vital. And I want to disable the sample again, enable this. Let's actually just flip this to direct out so it bypasses the effects. Okay, so now let me turn off the convolver and let's listen to with the vital effects. Turn that off. Let's say to the effects. It almost sounds a little bit better to me. It's like without that weird mid-range distortion and stuff that sometimes we get with like the vital compressor and that kind of thing. So it's almost like it sounds a bit lusher. So it's a nice way of deriving reverb type sounds from a rack of effects or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's strange. It should be the same thing. Sounds a bit lusher. I, I believe it's got to do with like the gain staging of Vital, like this level running into the distortion a bit, a bit, a bit hotter than the sample and that kind of thing. So it's, it's my gain staging that's changing the difference for sure. But it's just something interesting to note. You can kind of change the tone of your effects by doing this kind of thing if you want. But it's still a great sounding convolution that we've created. I like that a lot. So the last and probably the most experimental thing that I want to do is... I want to create a glitchy sound by uh, using Infiltrator on this sweep. So this might start to sound absolutely ridiculously noisy, but there's method to the madness. So let's put Infiltrator onto the sweep sample that we've created here and just go wild with the looper in here. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So now what we want to do is we want to deconvolve that. It's ridiculous, but we're just testing the waters here of, you know, what's possible with this kind of weird technology. So let's go and yeah, let's render this. And then we deconvolve it again. So let's just open this up, make sure we've got the right sweep sound loaded. Let's load infiltrator glitch process. And let's listen to what it sounds like on the percussion. That's amazing. That's amazing. We've created a masterpiece of weirdness. I love it. I love it. Completely rethinking the way that convolutions are supposed to be used. And I want you guys to take this to the next level too. You know, run as many weird things as you can on the sweeps. Make convolutions. Just, just do it. See what they sound like. The results could be quite surprising, as you can hear. Anyway. Cool, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my exploration of what you can do with convolution. Uh, if you liked the video, consider hitting that like button. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing to my channel and all those things. I'm going to be posting a bunch of these convolutions to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And 
yeah, I will see you guys next time. Cheers. <laughs>